Let's uh, finish this then. Mallorca 1, Real Madrid 1. Not quite the script we thought this game was going to follow, but a fascinating tie uh, nonetheless as we welcome in pitch side Alexis is Luis. But let's start with our commentary team, uh, shall we? Ian and Maka. Ian, you summed it up quite nicely. Also, an enthralling game that not many were expecting to go that way. Yeah, and I think it's good news for really for La Liga. If you want to look at the big picture, there we all were saying Real Madrid. They've got Mbappe now. They were already champions. They were already kings of Europe. They're going to run away with this league. It's going to be no contest. Well, Real Mallorca just, I think, proved otherwise that teams can organise, can stop them. OK, you can read too much into one result, but that was maybe significant. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think... You know when Real Madrid put that starting 11 out, how you have to defend. You have to be very condensed. You have to be nice and tight. You're almost allowing the ball to go wide, but you need help off the off the midfield partners to get back and try and double up and help your full backs out. Um, I'll just go back to Alexis and Luis, who are pitch side. Um, Alexis, why didn't it work? Why did it work so well on Wednesday and not work today? <laughs> Do you know what, Dan? I think that's what a lot of Real Madrid fans will be thinking. But as I keep saying, it probably shouldn't come as that much of a surprise because Real Madrid have actually dropped points here at Son Mosh for the last four seasons. So Mallorca, something about them, they know how to hold them. But we probably thought today would be a mountain too high for them to climb, considering Kylian Mbappe's inclusion. But they still did it again, Luis. So why couldn't it work for Real Madrid tonight? Well, it happens that sometimes uh, with, with some teams uh, during, during the season, you, you're not happy to go to the, to the place because you, you don't feel comfortable, because the crowd doesn't make you feel comfortable. The demons. Because, yeah, exactly, yeah, the demons. <laughs> they can burn you, I can tell you that. No, but honestly, I think that today I was missing some, some, some parts of this Real Madrid. Last year, we talked a lot about that um, they just uh, do enough, enough to get the result. And today, and we were talking a lot of times that uh, at some point that doesn't, it, it wasn't going to be enough. And today it does happen. They uh, just went short. In the second half, um, you saw that the, the lack of intensity. I mean, Mallorca was playing 120%. You could see the intensity, the energy. They were doubling up in every single position in the left back, in the left back, in the right back. The center backs were held by the, the midfielders. So the whole team was working together as a team, as a unit. It was very difficult to break down. Yeah. And you knew from the very beginning that if you're going to be lucky to score a goal, you have to uh, make it count because Mallorca is not going to let you uh, go uh, with the three points. And tonight, I was expecting a lot more. We've yeah. been talking a lot about Alexi with Cruz in this Real Madrid. is going to be something very important missing. And right now, you can say that. You can see that there is not that ability to switch the play easily. When Modri was into the field, you, you can kind of feel that, yeah, maybe now they can move it quicker, but it wasn't enough. And in the end, one more thing why the changes arrived so late into the mm. game. If mm. you want to change something, I understand that you don't want to change Vinicius Junior or you don't want to change uh, 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 your Bellingham. But if you want to make something different, you have to change it quicker. It was only seven minutes for Brian Diaz and for Adagule. You want to give it the chance, you need more minutes. So yeah, it was a, a, a total performance from, um, from Mallorca. And I think that Real Madrid needs to improve if they want to win the league this year. Yes, indeed, Dan. We were hoping for some fireworks, considering there were some big names in the crowd, including Argentina manager Lionel Scaloni and Rafael Nadal, too. But the Mbappe debut didn't go quite as planned. And once again, we're actually talking about the missed chances from Mallorca instead of Real Madrid. We saw in that sweet spot, 15, 20 minutes in the first half, where Real Madrid were brilliant. But we saw flicks and tricks, and they were trying to, you said, they're trying to walk the ball into the back of the net. And try to play each other in. Because it's like, I'm trying to show that this can work. Right. Where's Killian? Where's Vinicius? And, and although that's fine, you know, you want to you please everybody, this game is about picking the right pass at the right time uh, with the end product. It's not about this tippy-tappy, which it did become for quite long periods. And, and listen, there's two sides to this. I think that's the best kind of performance I've seen from a Mallorca side against somebody that's supposed to be the favourites for the, the mm -hmm. league, and they are. And that's due to the coaching change, and they were excellent. But although we all thought this script was going to be different today, I think it's shown that it's not just about putting everybody out and going, yeah. play. Because here you have uh, Jude Bellingham playing a little deeper, getting a little frustrated again. It's very early in the season. I'm sure Ancelotti will figure this out. Uh, and it, it's not, it did not quite click. And so then you have to look at it and go, well, what, what can we change? You know, maybe I play Kelly and Mbappe and Vinicius Junior. 
as a bit of a hybrid front two. Then I get Jude Bellingham back in the number 10 role. And by the way, he was the best goal-scoring midfielder in football last year. So you've now changed his position a little bit. But to get him in that 10 role, you have to change the shape. Yeah. And if you play that front two, somebody has to be left out. And who's going to be left out? The guy that scored the goal, <laughs> Rodrigo. So it's not simple. It's not just as simple as putting everybody out there and saying, right, superstars, go and play. We talked about it before the game. There's a chemistry and there's a balance that has to be right in every side. And although it wasn't a disaster, it certainly wasn't. You didn't look at that and go, wow. Because Mallorca did not, they did not set off and go, they did for 20 minutes in the first half, but they didn't just go, oh, you, you, you can just go and play. They were able to pressure this side. As Mac had mentioned in the commentary, the goalkeeper, he didn't make a couple of saves in the second half, but there was nothing really concrete, some good defending at the back post. But I think there is a lot of thinking to be done right. for Ancelotti. I mean, it's only match day one, I understand that. But it's Real Madrid. Yeah. It's, a, it's a disaster. It's under pressure. Well, what are you going to do? Who's at fault? Who, who didn't play well? And so there's a lot to work out, but I'm sure he will. But I think ultimately the way they, the shape they had today, I don't think that's the shape we'll see them have for the majority of the season because I think one or two will get frustrated and then he's going to have to figure that out. To Lewis's point, were you surprised we didn't see the substitutions earlier? Probably, but then he's got to think about who do you take off? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> who, do you, who do you take off? Who's going to... It's very early. I don't want to get in people's wrong side, but... But yeah, they were not going anywhere. They were not... It was all very slow. It was yeah. very, and Mallorca defended well. They defended well. They attacked well. They had a great shape. And as I mentioned, the left back, 5 million euros. I mean, it was, it was incredible, his performance. His crosses, his defending, his what rate. Uh, but for Real Madrid, it was... And I, and I talked about this before the game. How would they cope, particularly in the second half, if Mallorca defended deep, lots of red jerseys, how would they cope and try to break that down? And they didn't cope particularly well. Just tell, talk us through a little bit the absence of Tony Cruz and what difference that makes. Does it make a difference? Well, I think it makes a difference, but I still think when they got to the final third, it, it was too tippy-tappy. Right. It was too a back heel here and a flick here, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it, yeah, they got the, it worked for the goal, but it didn't really work again. And so that, you know, I think that's a big part of the problem. They're going to have to figure out what the best front line is and what the best position for these players are. But to go back to that point, there is no doubt Tony Cruz's passing is going to be, is going to be a miss for them, uh, for sure. But I don't think that was the major problem today. I just think the balance in the team with all those players in the forward position and Jude Bellingham deeper, that, that for me just took away another threat because if you've got Bellingham coming from that central position and I've got Mbappe and Vinicius or Rodrigo and I'm worried about them, and I'm keeping my eye out for them, those players have got worried about where the movement is going to be, then as a midfielder, you've got Bellingham attacking that space. Yeah. That's another threat, but yeah. we didn't really see that today because there was a change of position for Jude Bellingham and for one or two others. Luis, do you agree? Yeah, 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 of course I agree. My point on, on Cruz is that if you got players that they are gonna be big players on one v one, you got Vinicius in the left side and Rodrigo in the in the right side. What you want is bringing the ball as soon as possible. But no, if you bring if you play the ball from uh, Mendy to Rudiger, Rudiger to Militao, Militao to Carvajal, and then to Rodrigo because the the other team is already in shape. You need to move it quicker. That's why I think that Cruz understood that very quickly. The ball from one side is straight away to the other side, so you isolate on one v one in that uh, uh, right side. So I think that that's what is missing today. So many was replaced because wasn't giving much into the midfield. Yeah, he does a, a lot of uh, hard work into the side. I saw Militao and, and Rudy get very vocal with them because with him because he was losing some time the position. So the understanding in that position wasn't also the right one because Muriki is a, a, a piece of work right there and he, and he was creating so much trouble. So that's why I'm saying that they are going to miss uh, Cruz and they need to figure it out. How are they going to do it? 
I don't really know. That's why Ancelotti needs to continue reading this game. But of course, it's the first game. There is a lot of big work. But I think that today it was a wake-up call for Real Madrid. And I think they need to address it very quick because, as you know, in three weeks you can be five, seven points away from the, the opponents. And that's not something that Real Madrid wants right now. Well, a while ago, Luis, we just saw somebody running around and doing his laps around the field. And it happened to be Endrick. There was so much, I suppose, hype, especially around him when he came in. And we kind of almost looked at him and said, oh, yeah, yeah forgot still, he was on the bench. There. Too. There, well, speaking of substitutions, was he someone that you feel like you would have liked to see Carlo Ancelotti bring on today? Do you think he could have made that difference? No, in the end, he's someone that, that he can make that something different. I mean, if you're going to bring Ibrahim, if you're going to put him in the, in the left side just to make 1v1, it's exactly the same what Vinicius Junior was doing. Ibrahim Dia is very good when he's on the on the pockets behind mm -hmm. the, the, the striker and trying to bring the ball turning around and facing players. So, Maybe Hendrik could have been a, a, a good, a good um, play. Why? Because if you stick it there, he knows how to hold the ball a little bit and turn around. And it was very difficult to play into the middle with his Mallorca side. It was all about trying to bring the ball to the sides and crosses because they did so well um, uh, putting numbers into the middle, knowing that Real Madrid goes there. It was Vini there, it was um, Mbappé there, it was Jude Bellingham there, everyone through the middle. And it was very difficult. We saw trampling all the time and, and, and deflection all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can be lucky, you can get one and score a goal. But it's not the way that Real Madrid should have uh, um, go ahead in the, in the game today.